So now uh, removal, pro removal prosthodontics is defined as a replacement of missing teeth and supporting tissues with a prosthesis designed to be removed by the wearer that is the patient. So here you can see removal prosthesis uh, specifically a cast special denture for the lower arch and Kennedy's class 1 which will come to that later and uh, another CPD for Kennedy's class 2 modification one. Okay, so this has a cast partial denture with a metal framework and resin base over the missing teeth area. Okay, so removal processes uh, may be partial and complete like complete dentures and we have already taken this lecture in the last class. In partial dentures, depending upon the way they achieve retention, they are again further classified into extracoronal and intracoronal retained cast partial dentures. These are some of the various terminologies that you might encounter when studying this that is the abutment, the teeth that gives the support, the retainer, the tooth supported RPT, the tissue supported RPTs, what is a temporary more partial denture, what is an interim partial denture, what is a transitional denture, the treatment denture and centric. These are all the various terminologies which you can go over. I won't uh, explain them over here. These are available in your class notes. So what are the indications for a removal partial dentures? First is the length of the edentulous span that contraindicates the use of a fixed partial denture or a bridge. The patient's age, that is advanced age, uh, patients may be difficult to be restored with a fixed partial denture. When there are no abutment teeth present distal to the interdentulous space, patient has reduced periodontal support of the remaining teeth that is periodontally compromised dentition. When there is a need for cross arch stabilization, that is, there are teeth missing on either side of the arch, such as in Kennedy's class 4 and class 2, when you have excessive bone loss of the residual ridges due to parental disease or due to traumatic extraction, and various other concerns such as physical or emotional problems with the patient, when the aesthetic need is uh, not very high, or when the tissues need support uh, from the denture flanges. Okay, and of course, the economic condition of the patient. So coming to contraindications are when there is contraindication, there is a lack of suitable teeth to provide process stabilization and to remain, retain the teeth when the patient has other conditions like xerostomia, rampant caries, severe parental disease, poor oral hygiene or lack of neuromuscular control which is not mentioned over here but that is also one of the contraindications because uh, Inserting and removing removal partial denture requires some amount of finesse which is lacking in patients with neuromuscular control. Okay, so now coming to the classification which was depend, uh, given by Kennedy. Uh, this is the most famous classification and regarded universally worldwide. So the first class is when you do not have any teeth posterior to the edentulous space like over here. Okay, let me get the laser pointer over here. Okay. So, when you don't have any teeth present distal to the edentulous space, then it is considered as a Kennedy's class 1 bilateral. So, it is also called, uh, 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 mentioned as a free end saddle type of partially edentulous. Okay. And class 4, class 4 is a tooth bound edentulous area which is present anterior to the remaining teeth. That is, here all the teeth are present posterior to the edentulous area and it crosses the midline. So this is possible. Now Apple gave certain rules, uh, gave certain rules to apply in Kennedy's classification. So there is no confusion. Rule number one is the classification should always follow rather than precede the extraction. That is, first all the extractions need to be done, need to be completed, only then you classify the situation. Rule number two, if a third molar is missing, it is not considered in the classification. If a third molar is present and you want it to use as an abutment, then you consider in the classification. In that case, if you have a third molar present in a Kennedy's class 1 situation, you cannot call it a Kennedy's class 1, it will become a Kennedy's class 3. Rule number 4 is if a second molar is missing and not to be replaced, you do not consider in the classification. So now coming to rule number 5, the most posterior edentulous area will always determine the classification. You may have multiple edentulous areas but the one which is the most posterior in the arch will determine the type of the classification. And any other extra edentulous areas are called as uh, modification area areas and these are only designated by their number. That is how many extra edentulous areas you have. Okay. So lastly rule number 8 is there are no modification areas in class 4 because it crosses the midline and it remains anterior to all of the teeth. 
So what are the steps involved in processing uh, RPD? First is the examination, primary impressions, pouring of study cards, then you have mock preparation for the RPD, then you have a drawing of the framework followed by a jaw relationship, okay? And uh, you have final impression of the edentulous ridges. There are many techniques for this. Uh, Nisvanga's method, McLean's technique, uh, altered cast technique, functional reliant technique, and so on and so forth. So uh, this all depends on the operator preference and judgment. So then you have a teeth arrangement, you have and the final delivery of the RPD and follow-up appointment. Okay, components of RPD uh, which we'll be taking uh, in the future lectures, but still we we'll briefly go through them. We have the major connector, which is the which forms the bulk or chunk of the RPD. We have the minor connectors, which are any part of the RPD which is not a major connector or a direct retainer or a class assembly. So this or the rest. So all the parts of the RPD, these RPDs are called as a minor connector. Then rest, these are the rests you can see which are usually placed on the occlusal and incisal surfaces of the teeth and they provide support and then we have a direct retainer that is your clasp and then you have indirect retainers which are not present in this picture and we have the denture base which covers over the these minor connector and with the acrylic teeth. So this is the components of the RPD here you can see them more clearly okay so I have already mentioned this please go these uh, definitions to get a better understanding now during the first appointment like I mentioned is the diagnosis and diagnosis you already know from the picture what it is so again the uh, house classification of patient applies here that is you have the fourth category of patients as we discussed last week that is philosophical exacting indifferent and hysterical nothing more to add to it over here so again the event are the same you take a history you take to the diagnosis and you uh, formulate a treatment uh, many of the remote den partial denture patients are geriatric that is they are old age patients senior citizens and they have certain specific requirements that need to be taken into consideration you have to see uh, if they are taking any medication if there any history of hospitalization or uh, surgery and what treatment they received. This is very important in shaping your treatment protocol. So like a patient is a cardiovascular disease patient, usually in remote partial denture, they should not be of much consideration, but it is always good to know whether the patient is suffering from MI, angina, heart attack, stroke, or any irregular arrhythmias or and is a hypertensive patient. And uh, we have to see what medication he is taking. And Next is the diabetes. Again, diabetes is the same thing like we discussed in the last lecture. Uh, and then same thing, arthritis, which is Parkinson's disease, which causes lack of your coordination, Paget's disease. This will result in uh, bouts and episodes of uh, bone resorption and bone deposition. So the patient may complain denture becoming tight, denture becoming loose. So this is something which you have to take into consideration. Okay, then you have acromegaly, enlarged mandible, Again, here the data plan becomes difficult. Uh, you have to assess the amount of force that will be generated on the processes. Then you may need to set the teeth in a crossbite type of teeth arrangement. Then again, epilepsy, like I mentioned last time, patient can fracture and break the RPD. So you need to consider uh, unbreakable dentures or cast partial dentures, okay, or dentures with metal bases. And any type of small process or denture should not be fabricated for the patient. And again, all the same thing. There is any history of cancer treatment, xerostomia, uh, burning moth syndrome, which is also seen in menopause. Also, any patient has any transmissible disease like hepatitis A, B, tuberculosis, uh, HIV. Okay, so in such cases, the, you have to take extra care. This type of patient has to be the last appointment of the day, and uh, the same instruments as for examining the patients have to be used for the treatment uh, appointment. Also, you have to make sure that the impressions are properly disinfected. You use surgical gloves instead of uh, regular examination gloves, and any other drugs that may have an effect on the oral cavity of the patient, such as many. Uh, drugs can induce xerostomia so you have to uh, take them into consideration and, and 
to contract these we have to give celecox to the patient saliva inducing drugs okay then we have to see whether the patient is on antihypertensive drugs now coming to the history so first is the dental history after the medical history so you have to first take assess like how were the teeth loss whether it was due to parental disease or due to caries you have to gather information about the existing dentures how is the patient uh, responding to the present dentures or the old dentures you have to see the patient's x-rays to see if there are any root stumps impacted teeth any infection or any pathology such as of dent or rotogenic origin okay so uh, i have to check for bruxism tongue thrusting clenching these things to affect the success full retention of a processes then diet is very important like i mentioned most of the removal partial denture patients are nutritionally deficient due to the inability to chew food and due to any trauma or social stigma etc so you have to first take this consideration then you have to diagnose the remaining dentition the supporting tissues the interaction relationship how what kind of relationship is it is it a class 1 class 2 class 3 the interact space and you have to assess the temporal mandibular joint and the musculature for any temporal mandibular disorders okay or any trauma from the so initial examination you evaluate the hygiene gaze susceptibility the potential about twenty type of protrusion that patient has Okay, whether it is a uh, normal class one type protrusion, it is a, a class two or class three type of protrusion. Whether the patient has a cross bite or the patient has a deep bite, open bite, all these things need to be considered because this will ultimately determine the difficulty of the treatment. Okay, any mobile teeth, so you have, you have various diagnostic tools at your disposal because you can take radiographs, you can do blood testing of the. Questionable abutment teeth to check their vitality. You can diagnose using mounted casts on an articulator to check the entrance space, entrance relationship, the crown height, the abutment teeth height, and any undercuts can be evaluated. Yes, and related to the evaluation, already I mentioned what uh, you get uh, on the last lecture. And that was the lecture on the diagnosis and treatment planning in complete dentures. In front considerations, you have to assess the crown root ratio, the density of the bone, any uh, probing depth, uh, that change, how much blood you have present, is there any furcation involvement, is there any uh, endothelial lesion or such things, okay? So, true probability could be raw occlusion and result in bone loss and inflammation of the colon. So, this needs to be addressed if there is a drop of occlusion causing the true probability. Then, you have to check for all these the tissue attachments that is the three number attachment, whether it is high, medium, or low. You have to check the mucosa whether it is healthy or inflamed. You have to check, check the shape of the parietal vault again. You have to house classification that is class 1, 2, 3 parietal vault. Then you have to assess the relationship of the parietal vault with the soft parietal. Again, you have class 1, 2, 3 classification for that. You have to check if there is any anatomical structures like uh, tori or exostosis, which will again uh, determine the difficulty of the treatment and make you uh, take informed decision. If there is any soft tissue abnormalities like flabby ridge, uh, knife edge ridge, all this thing you have to check. Okay. So, uh, evaluation of diagnostic cast is uh, very helpful to check for any super erupted teeth, uh, interact space, rich relationship, and any undercuts. All these things can be checked with a diagnostic cast setup. Okay. So, any interference will need to be adjusted beforehand, that is using the modification appointment. Okay. Any tip teeth may need to be straightened up to provide space for the missing teeth. And you can even do the wax up on the diagnostic cast to get a better idea of, of the future processes. Okay. So, you have to analyze all these things the radiograph, the diagnostic cast, the dental history, the medical history, the intra external examination the health of the patient and based on that you will make the uh, treatment plan okay so these are the various phases of the treatment phase one is evaluation immediate treatment diagnostic mountings uh, any refer to other specialties for mouth filtration like patient some teeth may require endo treatment some teeth may require orthotic uprightening some teeth may require extractions so and patient phase two is we do the removal of the caries that is what all 
us. We specialities are referred to. Uh, we extract the tea, we do a prosaic preparation, alternative upright gain, work down treatments and all these things. And phase three is the preposphetic surgeries and definitive treatment has to do with the crowns and any bridges which are required for other teeth, abutment teeth, any splinting of the teeth is required. And then the mouth preparation in itself for the cast partial denture. And phase four is finally in delivery of the RP. A phase five is recall and support.